Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. This is all about tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. You probably call those tax deeds, but those are the properties that gets defaulted on, and of course, they're going to sell those at auction. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I have a guest later on. Her name is Sandra Bravo. She's going to be checking in from the Gold Coast over there in Australia. Think about that, all on our podcast. Okay, so when I'm at a live workshop, I always try to explain that this is a business of abundance. I'm going to say that word again, abundance. Now, there's a lot of unique ways to make money, but this is the most unique one I know about, and it's one that always works, and that's what I love about it. So we're going to talk about abundance, and we're going to talk about some things I want to be a little bit more transparent about, because tax lien certificates and tax deeds are really the world of the weird. Now, the first time I heard a student say that to me, I thought, wonder why they said that, because I guess I got used to it being the world of the weird. But it certainly is that, and you'll see that as I go through this podcast, okay? So certainly people do a lot of wild and unusual things in life, do that when it comes to property. So I've helped and I've guided people all across this great country, and I help them make money, and they come back and tell me the story about how they did it afterwards. And it it's similar to what I taught them, but it always seems that they add a little twist to the whole thing. So today I'm going to talk to you about a couple that started with me some time ago. And his name is Drew, and her name is Risha. Their last name is Davis. Now they've been with me for a little while. They've made a few deals that are really unusual, and you're going to love what I'm about to tell you today. The average person in the United States, the average family makes about $50,000. These people made about three times that on one deal. So I'm going to show you what they did. I'm sure you by that. I'm going to talk about what they did. And this is special because they bought a tax lien certificate, which if you just tuned in, tax lien certificate is just a simple piece of paper where you pay county the county money and they give you this certificate, which gives you control of a property. So I don't know where you are now, but these tax certificates work in about half of the states and half of the counties, and they're a nice, simple investment. So let me quickly review it so you understand it, make sure we get it. But tax lien certificates are issued when a property owner doesn't pay the tax. So when that tax isn't paid, the county then will issue a certificate that you or I or a family or anybody, we can buy it. And when we buy the certificate, we pay someone else's taxes. So Drew and Risha, they live in Arizona, so it makes sense that they would buy some certificates right there in Arizona. So that's exactly what they did. Now, I've been practicing this business. I've been in this arena for about 25 years, and I'm telling you, I'm always surprised to hear the stories. And this one is really going to delight you, okay? So people really do well in this business because in tax certificates, you can earn 16, 18, 24, up to 36% interest. And you'll hear me talk about that again and again throughout this podcast. Risha and Drew, they started buying these tax lien certificates. Now, all of the, the business of tax liens and deeds is always controlled by the local county, which gets their direction from the state. And that all comes from what we call the state laws. Or some people, I like to always say, it's the state statute. The statute in the state is something that the legislature enacted, okay? So if people fail to pay their taxes, then they're going to get issued a tax certificate. So in the biggest county population-wise in Arizona, that's Maricopa County. That's Phoenix, Arizona. And so this year, between 20 and 30,000 people, meaning homeowners, did not pay their property taxes. Imagine that. 30,000 people didn't pay the property taxes. Boy, that means the county is struggling to pay all the bills, that's for sure. So at that point, the property didn't pay. The county puts the property in default, and that triggers a collection process, which is what a tax lien certificate is all about, okay? All right, so now, if you want to buy one of these certificates, you don't have to qualify. So you don't have to go down to the bank, and you don't have to have a credit rating and all that. All the local government cares about is come in and pay us cash, and we'll give you the certificate, and now you can you control that property. So it's a nice, easy investment. So Drew and Risha noticed that there was thousands of these certificates available. So the first thing they did is they did something. They took some action. Now, I'll tell you right now, 90% of the people come on a podcast, 90% of the people that come to my courses, 
They don't do a lot unless we encourage them. So I'm going to encourage you to get off your rusty dusty and do something when you learn about this, okay? So if you're going to buy tax certificates, you have choices. Whatever you don't choose to buy in the ghetto, figure out where the property is and buy in the country club if you can. Obviously, you want to purchase in the country club because with tax lien certificates, if you don't get paid, you get the property. So let me say that again. If you don't get paid, you get the property. And I'll explain that more in a few minutes, okay? All right, so Drew and Risha, they want these investments because they're both busy with their life. So they want to buy investments that are passive. So a tax lien certificate is a passive investment. You just buy it and you don't do any work. You just hold it. In other words, you buy it. They give you a piece of paper, put it on your desk at home. There's no work to do with a tax lien certificate. Now in Maricopa, those certificates, Maricopa County, Arizona, those certificates pay up to 16%. Now think about that. You get something sitting on your desk earning up to 16%. At the bank, you're going to be making 1% or 2%. Okay, so you buy the certificate and you just sit on it. Now, I know what you're worried about. You're worried about are you going to get paid. But what you need to understand with a tax certificate, you're either going to get paid or you're going to get the property that the tax certificate was on. So let's do a quick review. You don't buy a tax certificate unless you're buying in the country club. You don't buy them for, more, for any way but with cash. Uh, when you do buy it, it's a passive investment. Uh, when you own the certificate, you just sit on it. There's nothing in to do. Uh, the rates could be all the way up in Arizona, all the way up to 16%. So there's a quick review. Now, how did I get all that information? I got that information on the county website if I wanted, or I could go to the statutes. You could Google the statutes for the state of Arizona, and they would show you hundreds of pages. But if you Googled the statutes for Maricopa County, it would be a lesser amount. You could get to know this. Okay, now 97% of all the people that default on their taxes, they're going to turn around and they're going to pay you. Yeah, that's right. They're going to come in and pay you on your tax certificate. However, if they don't pay you, you're going to end up with a property. Now think about that ending up with the property. All right, now, Arizona is a very benevolent state. What they could do like Texas, or they could do like other states where when the people default on the taxes, the local county confiscates the property. In other words, the local county will seize the property and then they will own it. Now they can sell it if they want, they usually do sell it, but they can confiscate your property if you don't pay the taxes. Guess what? 97% of the people do pay their taxes ultimately, so they know that. So Arizona issues what's called a tax certificate. So I call those states a benevolent state. That means the state is not going to take the property. They're going to issue a tax certificate. When you buy one, you'll have a piece of paper that could stay outstanding for as long as three years in Arizona. So you can own a certificate for this year. You can buy another one of the same property next year. You can buy another one of the same property the third year. So you can buy three years of tax certificates. If they never paid, then what you could do is you could confiscate the property yourself. Drew and Risha understood that, and now you understand it. So now we're just talking about Arizona, so let me quickly review that. The tax certificate is sold for this year. You don't have to buy next year's, but they'll ask you, do you want to buy a subsequent year? Of course you would, because at the bank, you'd earn 1% on your money. Why not buy one, two, three? Now, if you bought all three tax certificates and the owner never comes in and pays, the county, after you go through a foreclosure process, is going to award you that property. Now, if you didn't buy in the ghetto and you bought over in the country club, whoa, how good would that be? So most people are down buying stocks and bonds and options and any other kind of investment. Well, you're going to buy nice, safe, secure tax certificates. And if you don't get paid, you get the property. Now, how good is that? And so when you get the property, you get it without a mortgage. Let's see what happens to our friends, Drew and Risha. They buy these certificates and they spend a little bit of money. So if you're thinking and while, while you're driving, I'm going to tell you the total amount they spent. The total amount they invested was $11,000. And the homeowner, the property owner, 
never came in and paid. Now, when they didn't get paid, that means they're in line to get that property. Now, think about that. So they had to call an attorney, and the attorney said, okay, we'll do a foreclosure. Now, they could have done it themselves. So a foreclosure is nothing more than sending a few papers out and giving notice that you're going to do that. So suddenly, Drew and Risha are going to end up owning a nice property. And listen to this. The property had a value of $180,000. So they did the step-by-step -step foreclosure process, notified everybody that, look, you haven't paid the taxes. They notified the banker. They notified everybody. Turned out when they notified the banker, said, oh, no, the mortgage is already paid off. We don't need to know about this. Long story short, they went through the foreclosure process, and the local judge at the local uh, courthouse down came the gavel and said, you folks own the property. Wow. When the judge put that gavel down and said, you own the property, they were in their car and driving to that property. On the way, they called a locksmith. And the locksmith simply said, I'll meet you there. And when they got to the property, oh, my goodness, locksmith opened the door. They walked into the property. It was a $180,000 condominium. It looked like a normal livable house filled with furniture. Everything was there. There was everything that you could want in your house was already there. The television, the couches, the bedrooms, the linen, the flatware in the cupboards, the the dishes, everything was there. Now they had a $180,000 condo, which they could do anything they want with that property. Now, keep in mind, I've been teaching people how to do this for 25 years. I've heard these kind of stories before. And what did I say? It's the world of the weird. And you want to know how weird it is? Once they get finished fussing in the house, they decide to look in the garage. And what's there, and the tires weren't flat, was a car that was only four years old. Now, I don't know what happened to those people, and they don't either, but people walk away from things every day. Sometimes they pass away. Sometimes the family doesn't want the property. Sometimes they just don't want to pay taxes. Sometimes they move to another country. I don't know what happens to people, but here's our friends Drew and Risha. So they said, wow, what are we going to do with this property? So what they did is they rented the property and they rented it for $1,500 a month. And soon in 10 months time, they had all their money back. They got their money back and made a profit already. And then what did they do? They called Zillow and said, Zillow, we got this house and it has a value according to the multiple listing system and according to comparables in the neighborhood of over $185,000. So while they were renting, the property went up even more. Now think about this, they put it on Zillow and they sold it. That's exactly right, they sold it and they got the money. And they made a profit of over $158,000. Now is that a piece of change or what? Now let's go back to where I started 15 minutes ago. 15 minutes ago I said, they bought up tax certificates at auction. They invested a total of $11,000. They sold it for over $180,000. And after all the costs, all the brokerage fees, all the title fees and everything else, they made $158,000. Now, how many of those do you have to do in your life? How many in your life? In just a few minutes, we're going to hear from Sandra Bravo. And just this week, she sent me the pictures of tax liens that she bought, and she forgot that she bought them. But suddenly the county was calling and saying, we want to send you a check for almost $1,000. And she had just to try it out, bought a tax lien in Orlando, was paying at 18%. She forgot about it, but she looked in her desk drawer, and there was a tax certificate. And the county was saying, send us the tax certificate back, and here's your check. And so she invested about $500 and she got $950 back. She made 18% on her certificate. So now you're seeing both sides. Here's a couple that bought a tax certificate 
or number of certificates and didn't get paid, they certainly won the lottery. And here's Sandra, who you're going to hear from later on in this podcast, and she bought a tax certificate and she did get paid. So it's the world of the weird. It's always something good to happen. I like to tell people it's a business of abundance. There'll be always be too many. And all you have to do is get started and learn more. Keep in mind, you can go to my website, tedthomas.com, and there's free videos anytime you want to watch. Bill, I'm right in the middle of a podcast today, but I know that you've been doing something at one of the auctions. Can you give us a little insight on what you're up to there? Yeah, sure. The state of Florida every year, the end of May, holds auctions in all 67 counties and tax lien certificate auctions. And the one that I, in the county I'm bidding in, it's a two-day long auction. On the original list, there was about 15,000 tax lien certificates being offered. Wow. wow. And quite a few got redeemed, so it's down to about 10,000. There's no shortage of opportunities here. <laughs> and so I have been the past few days going through the list and putting in my bid. I can put bids in ahead of time. And so I've been, the auction just started, so I don't have any results yet that I've purchased anything. But uh, last year, yeah. I went and- You're doing uh, this all online, your, right? You're just sitting at your desk, right? All online from my office. Could do it from anywhere, but oh. I'm doing it from my office. Yeah. And last year, I had a budget of $30,000. That's uh-huh. what you do is you put down a deposit and set a bid limit, I mean, a budget limit, and- Mine was 30000 and in this in Florida, you have to put a 10% deposit down, nice. and I, I bid on approximately a million dollars worth of tax lien certificates. A million was, dollars? Wow. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm going to be cut off at thirty once I hit that limit. I wound up buying $23,500 worth of tax lien certificates last year. The impressive return I got was there was one that was worth about $9,500, let's say 10000 for round numbers. Yeah. And it paid off in about two and a half months, and huh. it paid 5%. Not wow. 5% Too interest, much. but in Florida. Oh, yeah, nice. but 5% minimum is the return on a tax lien certificate in Florida. So this wasn't an annualized 5%. This was 5% on my $10,000. So I got $500 in addition to my $10,000 back. And if you annualize that return, that works out to be something greater than 20%. So where are you going to get better than 20% interest in a secure investment like a tax lien certificate? Okay, let me ask you one question. One question, we'll run out of time. In Florida, they pay 18%, but you say you made 5%. I'm a little confused. 15% 15% is the maximum interest rate. What uh, I got, they also have a minimum uh, amount that they pay. Regardless of the interest rate you bid, the minimum return you're going to get is 5%, whether that's paid a month after you make your investment or if it's uh, paid two years after you make your investment, you're going to get a minimum of 5%. Now, if you bid 18%, you're going to get more after two years. You'll get a total of 36% after two years. Eighteen yeah, percent yeah. each year. Yeah, and so the so, trick is having some knowledge here because if you buy it, and your worst case is to make five percent. Is that it? That's it. Wow. And what I did this year is I took about thirty-five thousand dollars out of my retirement account, and I'm using that as part of my investment in tax lien certificates. How nice is that? Hey, listen. Thanks for all the information. I'll check in when you finish the auction. Will it take another day or two? It's going to be completed tomorrow. It's a two-day auction. All right. I'll have you come back on my podcast another time. Thanks a lot for checking in. I'll talk to you soon. Hi, it's Linda. If you enjoyed this episode slash learned something on this episode, be sure to leave us a rating and a review. I would love to know. Let's jump back into this podcast. Well, welcome back, everyone. Our special guest today is Sandra Bravo, and she's clear over in Australia, and she agreed to come on our call and Sandra and I go back a number of years and we've known each other for a while but she's a very successful entrepreneur as I said earlier in the broadcast and she's successful at helping women be successful so I'm glad you guys stayed for the rest of the podcast so uh, welcome back and Sandra I, I know you're on there are you with us now absolutely thank you for having me Ted I'm very excited to be here with you 
Oh, this is wonderful. Listen, it's my pleasure and honor to have you here. And first of all, I don't know all the details about your life, but could you tell the listening audience a little bit about yourself? And then let's really talk about empowering women and all the opportunities that are here in front of us for women. And tell us how you do that and whatever. Just just excite these people about what they really need to know. Now, this isn't a, my audience is 60 percent women. And I need to encourage them even more to bring their friends and do the same thing. So let me hand it over to you and you can talk about yourself first of all. Absolutely. Thank you, Ted. I'm originally from Mexico, hence the accent in case they're trying to guess. However, I've lived in Australia for nearly half my life, nearly 20 years. And I guess being Mexican, I just went against the traditional culture of being looked after by a man, wanting to get married and being taken care of by a man financially and all of that. And I was the rebel because I have three brothers. I'm the only girl at home. So I was overprotected with three brothers and my parents. So I just wanted to run away and be free and be independent. And so my parents always say, when I finish university, I can go. So that was my ticket to freedom. And I left home when I was um, 21. And I went around the world traveling for three years, just anywhere and everywhere that life took me and just getting jobs here and there, wherever I could so that I could finance my travel around the world, which was always my dream. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. I used to sit in front of the TV as a child and watch a travel channel from America. And I used to see all these beautiful places and think, wow, I don't want to see all these places on the TV. I want to go and see them myself. So I always grew up with this vision of, I want to travel and go to all these countries. I have actually been to 41 countries now that I'm 41 years old. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I came to Australia and I, I, I ended up meeting the father of my babies and my former husband and I got married and I stayed here. And I used to work for uh, the largest chain of travel agencies here in Australia called Flight Center. And I worked for them for about 10 years. I was managing a few of their branches with sales and I had my team and I loved it. Like I got to travel, I got to make really good money and have a big social life and uh, lots of fun and parties. And it all changed once my babies were born. I'm the mother of two beautiful little girls, Alana, who's 12, and Brianna, who is nine. And I met them, and we should tell everybody they're going to be movie stars, right? Oh, I know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) They're very entrepreneurial, too. Once my babies were born, Ted, I was feeling very lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. All of my family's in Mexico, and my former husband's family's all in England. So we didn't have anyone. It was just the four of us, and it meant I had to drag my babies out of bed at 6 a.m. when it's cold and dark and rainy and miserable. That was in Melbourne back at the time. And I had to take them to childcare and drop them off to strangers and have them crying and pulling off my lap and saying, mommy, don't leave me. And it was heartbreaking for me having to wipe off my own tears and take these little hands off my lap to go to work for 10, 12 hours a day to come back at night, again, when it's dark and, and rainy and cold and miserable to pick them up, all this naughty and dirty and upset and crying to take them home and barely have time to just bath them, feed them, put them to bed and do the same thing the next day. Wow. And I hated it. Yeah. I, I just, I started to feel like this is not the life that I signed up for. And it's so unfair for women having to face this T intersection of, having to make a decision of, do I stay in my full-time job and give up being part of my baby's lives and being there for their milestones and their special moments? Or do I give up my lifestyle and stop working and stay at home with my babies, which means I can't travel to Mexico a couple of times a year to see my family. And I guess call me greedy or whatever you want, but I, I wanted to have both. I wanted to keep my lifestyle And I wanted to be a present mom for my babies. And that was the fuel that really drove me into my journey of personal development and having to find a way to have them both. Because I thought, surely there's got to be a way to have them both. So I started attending seminars and doing a lot of self-education, reading books, and just working on my mindset and my, my personal growth. 
so that I could find the way. And sure enough, I attended one seminar and another seminar and it was life changing for me. I, I ended up discovering what my um, life purpose was and how much I love teaching and doing public speaking and empowering others. And really? I ended up being chosen out of all these people at a seminar, the Success Resources International and see how they could, they chose um, one person to start training for them on a stage. And out of all the people in the room, that one person was me. Wow. How about that? <laughs> Wow. So that's what got you into speaking on the platform. That's correct. So that was oh, life changing for me. Uh, needless to say, after being in my full time job for 10 years, I ended up um, quitting my job and I started um, speaking all over the world with success resources. And I still didn't know what my particular niche was there because as much as I loved it, I, I thought I wanted to do personal development but personal development is a big ocean it's like oh, I'm the little fish in the ocean so I needed to narrow that niche and after a couple of years of speaking in different countries with success resources I started to attract a lot of women they would just come up to me and say oh my god your story really inspired me and I have a similar story and I want to do this and I want to do that and when I asked them why are you not doing it and women were very talented in many different areas. Yeah, of course and, they are. Of course, yeah. Yeah. When I asked them why you're not doing it, I realized that regardless of the different countries, the different languages, the different cultures, the answer was always the same. The common theme across the board was that they didn't believe they were good enough. And they didn't have the, the confidence and the self-esteem really? to go out there and make it happen. And that's what really woke me up to go, wow, I need to help these women. They've got everything they need within themselves to, to be successful. They just don't believe they're good enough. And that's what really uh, got me to launch Amazing, which is my brand. It's with triple S because of my accent, because I can't pronounce the Z the way you guys do. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I made it Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, and, with an exactly. S. Exactly, <laughs> with a triple S, yes. Oh, amazing, for, uh, okay, I got it. All right. Yeah, the, the triple S actually stands for a simplified success system. And oh. that's when I started doing retreats and workshops and all of these things to empower women and to help them raise the level of confidence and self-esteem and, and just help them be believe that they can do it. If I can do it, they can do it. And I guess I, I became the role model in the fact that now I can have my own business that I run from home and gives me the freedom to be a present mom and to take my kids on trips with me. So, so you do all this uh, other than your travel schedule, you do everything from your home? Is that what you do? Mm-hmm. Oh my That's goodness. correct. If I'm not traveling, I'm working in my home office and being a present mom for my babies and running to all of their events at school and taking them to all their competitions and, you know, being an Uber wow. mom in the afternoons. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Sandra, I'm in the business of um, tax lien certificates and tax deeds. And by the way, congratulations. I understand you just got paid on a certificate. That must make you feel good. I do. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love surprises when you forget that you invested a little bit of money. You know, here those, ha those tax liens sneak up on you. You know what happens? You buy them and you invest a thousand or two thousand or a couple of thousand, and then you forget. And then all of a sudden yeah. they, they pay off after about two years or so. You say, wow, look at this check. You didn't even <laughs> And that's what happens. Exactly. Whereas, I whereas loved we, it when I heard the check came in. I'm like, wow, yeah. I bought that two and a half years. Yeah, ago. plus it wasn't a work. That's the beautiful part. But anyway, yeah, that's my part. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about this empowering women. My people are, they're excited about making these big profits in real estate and so on. And I get it. And I try to help them as much as I can. But a lot of people are nervous to get in. How do we get these? I already have 60% of the women already doing it. I have a large percent of them that need more encouragement. So what are, the, what are you at the words and the way you encourage them? What should I do to get more women? Do you know, Ted, I have a, a strong belief that 80% of the success is the mindset because yeah. many times people go running around, oh, I want to learn internet marketing and trading on, on the internet and all these. And they find a way to sabotage themselves because they don't have the 80% of the equation which is the mindset. Once they have that, they find a way to make it a big success. And I find that investing the way you teach in tax liens and tax deeds 
for me is the, the safest, the, the easiest way to do it. And I find that for us women, we are better at it than even men because we're more methodical. We pay more right. attention right. to detail. We right. are better at, at multitasking so that we don't lose track of, oh, what I was researching. We are right. very good at researching and looking things in the internet and all of that. So I find that um, if there's any tool that is good for women to become successful, it's, it's exactly what you do. And that just doing a little bit of mindset work and reading books and to help them with that confidence to believe that they can do it it gives them the courage to throw themselves out there because you know what Ted? it's like anything new we learn just like when we learn to ride a bike as a, as a child or when we learn to drive it was a scary we didn't know how to do it but we did it and the more times we did it and practiced the better we became at it and so it's the same. It might be a little bit scary because it's, it's something new for us and we don't know, but it's just a matter of getting it started, just one step at a time. And then as we learn more and as we practice and practice, we increase our confidence and we become better at it. So the key is just get it started one step at a time. Just get started. Just get started. Boy, how many times do I hear that? And I try to say that a lot, but a lot of people just don't. Uh, all right. Well, let me uh, let me digress a little bit because you have um, what sounds like the absolute perfect life. I know you travel. Uh, last time I was talking, you were headed for Europe, and I know you've been in South Africa, and then you've been in Brazil, and then you're in Australia, and you're in Singapore. And I think the last time I saw you on the road, we were both in Melbourne, Australia. So that, that sounds like a romantic life and a lot of fun. But is it really that romantic and a lot of fun or is it hard work? Tell people about that. Yeah, absolutely. Just like anything, if you want to make it work, it requires a lot of hard work and commitment and determination. Um, when I saw you in Melbourne speaking on the platform, said I remember thinking, wow, I I get to share the stage with so many different speakers. And so I get to see authenticity and not, right. and I remember thinking, God, Ted, you're just so genuine and authentic. And I did a lot of research you. on you. And I love because you don't teach only your knowledge and expertise, but you put a lot of your students on the platform and on the videos because mm -hmm. what happens is there's only so many states or so many counties that you can do yourself. But right. when you're including your students that are making it work, all of a sudden is, is leverage, right? You're covering 10 times more than you could on your own. And so uh, also, of course, people teach in different ways. And when you have your students, they might explain things right. in a different way that we hear 10 times, but it didn't click. And all of a sudden, the 11 times, someone explained it in a different way. And it's like, oh, the penny drops. And now it makes sense. Right. But I find Ted, that one of the biggest reasons why people are not successful these days is because they don't stick to it long enough. They think it's this overnight, you know, make me reach the scheme. And if it has to work in a month or two or 12 months, I'm out, I quit. And the truth is, I'll never forget, I was sitting as a student on the seminar and I heard one of my mentors on the stage said, if you stick to it for three years and you do everything we teach you, I guarantee you'll be financially free between three to five years. And I'll never forget his words like an echo. I'm like, okay, three to five years. I can do this. I can do this. And sure enough, a year later, I have replaced my income and left my job. And, and two years later and three years later, and it keeps building up. And the thing is, when people get sidetracked because there's so many shiny pennies and opportunities that get thrown at us these days, and, and they're running in one direction, and then they hear, oh, someone else just did, did well on this other thing. And then they run to check it out. And next thing they know, they lost track and they got sidetracked and they ended up in something else. And then they say, oh, it didn't work or whatever. And the truth is, it's just they didn't stay on it long enough. And it's about persistence and determination and just sticking to the one thing. Because if we try to do five different things, we become the, the jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah, you got to focus, no doubt about it. Focus makes a big difference, huge difference, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. and yeah. you can't have more than one or two priorities because they're no longer priorities, and right. I've done it. I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I'm like, oh, I can do this and that, 
And then I look at my agenda and it's impossible. It's only 24 hours in the day. Yeah. And then I drop the ball in one or two. So it's just about focusing in the one thing. Yeah. And I remember the first time I logged into your platform and I was like, wow, look at the amount of stuff to learn. And as I said, you have different students in different counties and teaching different strategies. Yeah. And there's no reason to look anywhere else but just to commit and to block the time in the calendar every day because people think oh i'm busy during the week i'm, I'm just gonna allocate five hours on sunday it doesn't work like that because it's about consistency so even if it's an hour a day but it has to be consistent to create that momentum right and to discipline ourselves and to teach ourselves the habit of i'm gonna allocate and i'm gonna put the block in the calendar just like i need to make time to eat or go to the gym or go to sleep i'm gonna allocate and block my one hour to study tax liens and tax yeah. deeds and certificates and all these so that i can you know every one hour a day it just stacks up and then after a month two months a year two years you start to see the results but you can't learn something new by just you know giving it five minutes a week you, you have to stick to it so you're saying that, that manana is not in your vocabulary? <laughs> no, it can be. And it's a habit. Like it has to get out and it has to be replaced with a more empowerful and a habit for success. And that's a big thing because how we do little things is how we do big things. And what happens is if you want to lose weight, but you hang around all your friends that eat uh, deep fried food and yep. junk, guess what? It's not going to happen. If you want to quit smoking, but all your friends smoke and drink, it's not going to happen. So, you know, if you want to be successful and you're hanging around all these complainers and whiners and uh, I, I'll never forget when I uh, still lived in Melbourne, I remember I went like deep in. I stopped watching TV. I stopped going out with my friends. I stopped drinking because I needed all of that time to implement in Sure. my personal growth and so my friends used to judge me really you're spending all this money in in courses and seminars and they thought i was crazy and i was like reading another book and getting up at 4 a.m to listen to another program of tony robbins or whatever was gonna get me motivated yeah, for the day yeah. and like my i'm like sorry i don't have time to do drinks on friday night because i've got to study i'm not watching tv anymore and all of these things and then i realized you know what i need to find myself a new group of friends that are going through the same journey because otherwise all of my friends are trying to pull me down and inevitably that environment is going to end up beating me so mm -hmm. i had the intention of and when i look back back then i've been now in gold coast for six years and moving was the best thing that could have happened to me because it was like a fresh new start i, I had the intention i put it on my vision board and boom, what happens? An opportunity comes and we end up... Okay, now slow go down. Here. Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so to move your location, you're saying you move from one place to another, and so that was a fresh start. So then uh, what did you do about a board? You said something about a board. What was that? Yeah, so what happened is when I was in Melbourne, I thought, you know what? I, I want to move. I want to be in a nice climate because being from Mexico, living somewhere cold just doesn't support me because it just gets me depressed and it gets me locked at home and I'm a people person. I need to be out there. Right. And then I thought, I need a, a new group of friends because like my friends, they're all complaining. They don't have enough. These are just blaming oh, yeah, everything yeah, else right, instead of right. taking control of their, their destiny. Right. And so I had the intention I, and I put it on my vision board and I used to get up at 5 a.m. and I used to sit in my bed and visualize and meditate and visualize the life I wanted. And I wouldn't get out of bed until I had that split second of a certainty, a feeling of certainty that I've got this, I can do this. And then I'm pumped for my day. Yeah. And, and sure enough, within six months, this opportunity for my husband at the time comes to to get this job in uh, Queensland, Australia. So we relook, I'm like, I jumped at it straight away. I'm like, yeah, doesn't matter. Let's sell the houses, let's pack and let's go. Found new schools, moved, wow. we just, it, we did it all in a month, like just super fast. Wow. And then guess what? It's wow, fresh new start. My kids are in school. I don't have my full-time job because now I'm traveling. So I'm going to be very careful on the friends that I choose now because I want to surround myself with people that, are in the personal growth journey that are these um, are all very conscious decisions you're making absolutely yes and this is how life is it's 
we create our life by design. We don't just wake up in the morning and let life happen to us, right? We, we gotta have to in, the intention and take the actions that match that intention. And I remember in Melbourne, most of my friends either had jobs or were stay-at-home moms, and all they do is complain. Now, I, I can't even tell you one or two friends I have that have a job. They're, they're all entrepreneurs. They have their businesses. They're investors. They're, oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. They talk They're different. all in the past. They think different. Exactly. The, yeah. Exactly. And guess what? Okay, now, the now let me stop you. Let me stop you. Because you're going 100 miles an hour. My my people are listening. They're going to be speeding in their car. They're going to be going 90. They have to go the speed limit. They can't go so bad. <laughs> so I got to slow you down so they'll slow down, okay? All right. Now, yes. you mentioned something then. You taught me this a long time ago. I never did it, but I know people that did it and were successful. And you said a vision board. Now, what is a vision board and what did you do? Oh, nice. I love it. Look, back then, I used to stick colorful pictures on my wall in my bedroom and positive quotes, affirmations, okay? And oh. I would just put them, my, my bedroom back then was like a theme park. <laughs> I remember my husband at the time, we bring the friends in going, look, look at all the stuff on her wall. And she's manifesting a bunch of it. <laughs> Now what I do, I, I design very pretty. I get my graphic designer to design very pretty canvases. And yeah. then I get them printed and then I put them all around my office. And then, for example, in one of my living areas, I just have stickers with black letters that have like positive quotes because the subconscious is looking at all these things all the time, even if we're not now consciously, give me some you know. Give, give, me some, give me some visuals, but give them to me oral because we have to get them on the, on the of tape. Of course. <laughs> so give of me a course. visual. So, here we go. I have, as I enter into my house, on the right-hand side, there's a, a sign that says, life is beautiful. Yeah. You are beautiful. It yeah. says, dreams come true with faith. Live your dream. Believe in yourself. I have wow. a pink sign with it's a stickers and letters that says, do something amazing today. Be amazing. I have a canvas that says, I fill my mind with positive thoughts. The other one says, I have loving, positive, and happy thoughts. Wow. Um, I am a beautiful soul, and I shine my light for all to see. I am worthy and deserving. I love and approve myself. Wow. I teach, encourage, instruct, mentor, praise, because that's my life purpose, right? Influence, right. guide, right. inspire. Then I have one that says, I, I, this year, I triple my income and double my time off. Wow. And I have this giant canvas with uh, pictures. And so basically is the visual of what I want in my life. I have one of me and opera, which is a, a superimposed um, photo because I want to be on a stage with opera one day and I want to be interviewed by her. Um, I have, I used to have my car and then now it's a car I have. I used to have uh, pictures of the house. I've got the house I had. I have photos of airplanes and business class travel and my kids and I on the beach and I wanted to go to Maldives and that became true. So a lot of the stuff on my vision board, like I normally we do it uh, at the beginning of the year and I do a new one once a year. And then a lot of the things I put on it, I manifest, they become true and wow, then it's like, is, great. What yeah, this is next? really inspiring for people. They, they're getting, this is really good. Really good. Yeah. Some people yeah. just do it black and white, and that's fine. For me, color inspires me. So everything yeah. around me has to be colorful. I My couches in my office are colorful. I love every time I see you, Ted, because you always wear colorful shirts, and you're yes. very color coordinated, and yes, color it's... inspires me. Yeah, yeah. I love color. I love color. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, look, I'm going to run out of time, so I've only got five minutes left. What I'd like you to do in the, in the five minutes, I know you help a lot of women, and we haven't talked about that. We talked about us and you and whatever. But tell me, just your talk would be inspirational enough for today. But I know you actually teach courses on this. Can you give us a little insight into that? Yes, absolutely. I do. For example, I have a, an online program called the Amazing Online Academy, which is 100 days to reprogram your habits for success. So it's like a, a three-minute video you get every day. I have it on my book as well, actually. You read five minutes a day. And it teaches you something in the seven areas of your life, whether it's health or wealth or personal growth or contribution, whatever. And then it gives you a task to do that particular day. And it just takes five minutes, but it gives you a different one every day. And the reason why it's 100 days is so that they stack up 
to create a difference so that it's a permanent change in your subconscious at the end of a hundred days. And now you have daily habits that are supportive of your goals so that they're going to drive you to success instead of uh, getting on the way. I do a lot of, lately I've been doing a lot of neuro-linguistic programming that I implement with my coaching and mentoring sessions, which uh, oh, no. I actually put on uh, Sandra okay, NL. Oh, wait, wait, before, you go to that, before you go to that, what was the name of this, the one you just talked about? The Amazing Online Academy. They can get it on yeah. sandrabravo.tv. Okay, now go slow now. S spell it out for Sandra. everybody. Sandra Bravo, which is yeah. B-R-A-V-O, like clapping Bravo. That's my last yeah. name. Good. Sandra Bravo dot TV. TV. TV, yeah. Okay. Sandra Bravo TV. Okay, good. Okay. No, Sandra Bravo uh, dot TV. All right. And does that mean that they would get three minutes a day of TV with you? Uh, it's yeah, it's a audio. video telling them what to do. Yeah, for a hundred. Oh, so it's a three-minute video every day. Yep. Oh, wow. Is that? Okay, good. So they can learn about that. Okay, now, I just want to make sure you get that in. Now, we've got two minutes left, so uh, go, go ahead and tell me uh, what you're going to say. Uh, I had to interrupt you. I want to make – everyone's going to call me up and say, how do I get a hold of her? And I won't know how to do it either. So if we don't get it on this <laughs> audio, then, uh, yeah. oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay. Of course. Sandra there's Bravo a, another, TV. I got it. TV. Yeah. All right, All right good. Or another good link for tips on mindset, which I do with NLP, is SandraNLP.com. Sandra NLP. And what is that? Is that audio or is that video again? There's both in that. There's both a lot that. that they can learn oh, online. Okay. Okay. In, uh, yeah, okay. SandraNLP.com. Okay. Yeah, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic okay. Programming. I'm, I'm sorry I put you off your track, but you know, see, we only have uh, about 30 minutes. Oh, but I always want to make sure as I, but the people always ask me, you got a guest? And if I got a guest mm -hmm. and I don't tell, tell them how to get the guest, then they get upset with me. Can you tell yeah. me about, in, in two minutes or less, Tell me about, you actually invited me to one of them, but it was for all women, so I didn't go. <laughs> you did a conference in Bali, right? Did you do a conference in Bali about a year and a half ago? In Bali, yes, I do. Um, what was uh, that? Was, that was a women, a female conference, right? Correct, yes. It was a, a ladies' retreat, and we normally do them for five days in Bali. I, I get some of my spiritual healers to come. We sponsor the poor girls in Bali that normally the parents want to get them married at 16 so they don't have to look after them anymore. So yeah. we sponsor them and they came and did it with us. It's a this beautiful resort that we do on the beach. And we start really every morning with meditation and grounding ourselves on the beach. And then we work hard throughout the whole day. And then in the evening, we normally have a team night where we have to dress up and implement some of the magic that we learn throughout the day. It's life changing. We work with a lot of just letting go of the baggage that we carry as women, all that pain and, and trauma from our childhood so that oh. um, we can release all of those emotional blocks that get on the way so that we can walk out of there happy and empowered and, and ready to live a new life, believing what, in ourselves. What's the, so. what's the title of that seminar? Amazing Ladies Retreat. Amazing so, Ladies um, And the intention of it is to get over uh, past history or what is that? I don't know. We work on their confidence and self-esteem and we let go of all the past wounds and we help women connect and find their life purpose. Whoa. And how many people go to one of those? Is it 10 or 20 or 100? I or? normally have between 30 to 50 women. 30 to 50. And where do they come yes. from? Oh, Europe, uh, Mexico, America, a lot of Australians, of course, and a handful of Asians, like really? Malaysia and Singapore. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And how would, they know about, how would they know about that? My ladies normally connect through the website. You can um, actually on the website that you gave them, centralbravo.tv, they can yeah. go to the amazing university and it has all the different courses and the retreats and the stuff. And it's really cool because they become soul sister state. So I've had ladies that, for example, my Australian ladies go on holidays to Europe and they get to stay with one of my ladies in Poland, in uh, Scotland, in Spain, really? because they became soul sister at the retreat. So oh. it's, a, it's a beautiful sisterhood. Really, really. Mm -hmm. I've only got 30 seconds left. Linda's waving at me. Tell me 30 seconds left. What do you want to tell them? Don't quit the current gig until they've replaced their income with the new gig. People don't get themselves in trouble when they quit too early. Don't quit your current gig. Is that what you call that? Their job is a gig. Yeah? Yeah, job or Yeah, yeah. Showbiz, or showbiz talk. Showbiz talk, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. Sandra, what a wonderful interview. You are the best. You're always excited. And I'm going to tell the rest of the world that it's four o'clock for me in the afternoon, but it's four o'clock in the morning for you in Australia. <laughs> and here you are all fired up. Thanks for being a guest. I'm honored to have you. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Ted. It's been a pleasure. You're awesome.